Microscopes are great fun to use because they allow you to see a whole level of detail that you didn't even know existed. But we need to be really careful with them. They cost a lot of money and we need to be carrying them with two hands on the back bone, the spine of the microscope, and supported underneath. And of course, before you move away from the trolley, you may need to make sure that you've got the whole lead. You don't want to be pulling it away and then this one pulls another one off the trolley. So we're going to place it securely on the bench. We're going to plug it in and we're going to turn it on. We're going to make sure that the backbone is facing us so that we've got these two knobs that we can uh, move and adjust there. Now, to start with, this is our eyepiece lens and these ones, you've got three objective lenses. They're the objective lenses because they sit next to the object and this is the eyepiece lens because it sits next to your eye. So we're going to make sure that that is facing us and we're going to just take a little look at these lenses. This one is times four. That means you'll see things at four times bigger. This one is times 40. So you'll see things 40 times bigger and this one times 10. However, if you look here, you'll see that this lens here is also times 10. So let's think about it. Times 10 times four, that's 40 times bigger. Times 10 times 10, 100 times bigger. Times 10 times 40, 400 times bigger. And you'll notice that as I'm moving this around, I don't know if you can hear it, listen. You can actually hear it click into place each time. A lot of the times when students are asking for help, they haven't actually fully clicked it in to place before they start looking through it. So when we get our microscope, what we're gonna do, our starting point is this part here, the stage with our stage clips, we're gonna make sure that we've wound that as far away from the lens as possible. So that's moving it up and that's moving it away. You've got two lenses, but we'll, we've got two, sorry, let me stop that bit again. You've got uh, two knobs, the coarse focus, which is the big knob that brings it mostly into view. And then to get a really sharp and fine focus, you're gonna use this smaller one. And all that's doing is moving the stage up and down closer to the lens. Okay, we're going to make our specimen to view underneath the microscope. And often we start off with an onion cell. Why? Because onions are cheap, they give you a really good image, their cells are really large, and they're easy to prepare. We're gonna start off by cutting the onion. Now, one of the things you're not gonna do is cut in the air. This is what I see students doing, it's really dangerous. You're also not going to cut towards yourself, that's equally dangerous. What you're gonna do is you're gonna place the onion securely onto the chopping board and carefully you're going to chop a piece of it. I'm just gonna chop this very quickly and then once we've got our onion like this, then we can start to peel off a layer. So you've all chopped onion no doubt before and what you can do is peel off a piece of membrane, a piece of tissue like this, or you can go on the inside of this piece of onion and you can peel one off there. You can even do it with your fingers, just have a little play around with it and you'll be able to remove a layer look at that lovely that's going to give us some lovely images i'm going to place that straight away onto my glass slide don't lose this it's really easy to lose but it's on a piece of paper or on your textbook you can't see it i'm going to place that on there now it's actually a little bit big for the slide but it doesn't matter in fact let me cut that down no it's not cutting to make it a bit smaller. So I want it really flat. I don't want 
a bumpy image, a bumpy specimen, because otherwise it's always going to be out of focus. I'm going to add a little bit of iodine stain. Actually, iodine dissolves in potassium iodine, iodide. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny piece of it and we're going to plop it onto, onto our sample. And the reason why is because our onion cells are transparent. So to give them uh, a greater density so that we can actually see the detail inside, I've put the iodine stain on. Now, that's going to take a minute or two to sink in. So I'm going to go and get a tissue because obviously we don't want to put that liquid on the microscope. I'm going to place what's called a cover slip on the top. Um, it's a teeny tiny fragile, fragile piece of glass that we lay over the top. And the reason why we lay it over the top is because we don't want our expensive microscope lenses coming into contact with the liquid that's on there. We don't want to stain our lenses. Now, there's a way of doing it. When you plonk it on like that, what you're going to end up with is some, with some magnificent air trapped. And it looks lovely under a microscope, but it doesn't help our image very much. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to make sure that's nice and flat and as smooth as possible. And I'm going to add another one. And the way to add them is to gently lower them down on an angle. So you place one of the sides and then you drop it like that. And you can actually see the air disappearing out of it as it takes hold. So I'm just going to apply a bit of pressure there to push the air out. I've got some excess iodine, so I'm just going to soak that up with a tissue so that I know it's not going to go onto my lens. I'm then going to place it onto my microscope. I'm always going to start on times four. Times four, because it's really times four to magnification. I'm going to look from the side and I'm going to make sure that it's directly underneath and I'm going to secure it with some stage clips. From looking at this angle, I'm then going to use this coarse focus and I'm going to wind it up as high as it will go. Now, on the microscope, the only reason you can see uh, images is because the light is coming up through the image, through the lens and through the lens into your eye. So you need... To make sure that your microscope light is on, you need to make sure that the hole underneath allowing the light to pass through is open and that's controlled by this dial here. Sometimes you need more light, sometimes you don't need as much light, so I'm going to make sure mine is fully open. We're starting on the times four, because when you start on that magnification, you've got the biggest field of view that that you can have. In other words, the big circular piece of um, image that you get, that is what we call your field of view. And if I look down it, the first thing I can see is a big black line. It's like a needle in the middle of my field of view. Ignore that, you don't need to worry about it. So I can see something, but I need to focus my image. So I'm going to slowly, really slowly, I'm going to wind this stage away from me and that tiny bit of movement has brought my image into view. I'm just going to switch to the fine focus and see if I can improve it a little bit. Now on times 40 magnification I can see the nucleus, I can see the cell membranes and I can see the boxy nature of the cells. Now I've got my image and it's on times 40, I'm looking at a really big piece of onion really and when I move the magnification higher, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on an even smaller piece of the onion. So what I need to make sure I've got is the bit that I'm looking at that's of interest to me right in the middle of my field of view. Now fortunately, this one is. So to move to the mag next magnification, I need to use the coarse focus. I move it all the way down while I'm looking at it from the outside. I make sure I'm moving to the times 10, which is actually times 100. 
I wind it up and I just keep checking that it's not going to go in and touch the, the lens there. And then I can start looking down through the lens and I'll see that it's disappeared. It's completely out of focus. I'm going to use the coarse focus to try and get my first image. Oops, there it is, straight away, teeny adjustment and there's my image. I'm going to use my fine focus to see if I can just improve that a little bit lovely this time i can see some of the storage the starch storage grains in the cells they've got a much darker color i can still see the nucleus i can see the cell membranes of individual cells now not just the the cell wall separating the cells i can see the cell membrane and the cell wall Okay, again, I'm going to see if I can get an even better image with more clarity, I can see more detail. But to do it, what I remember I have to do is I have to remove my eye from the eyepiece. I'm looking at what I'm doing. I'm using the coarse focus to move it away. I'm turning the objective lens until I hear a little click. I know it's in place. I'm then rolling it up as high as I can, but I don't want the lens to touch my specimen and then looking through the eyepiece lens I'm using the coarse focus and I'm moving the image away now strangely you would think looking at times 400 you were going to get a better image I can't get one so far let me try it again I'm moving it up as high as I can so it doesn't touch I'm looking through the Aha, uh -huh. got it. And this is really nice. I can really see um, the cell membrane in more detail. I can see the cell wall. And I can actually see that the liquid that's sitting on top, the iodine solution, is actually moving. I can see bits moving about. It's now time to pack away. So what I'm going to do before I remove my slide from the stage, I'm just going to roll the slide as far away as possible. I'm going to return it to the smallest magnification. And then when I remove my slide, I'm not in danger of lifting it up and damaging the lens. When I put this in the bin, the cover slip is still attached to it. That can go in the bin as well. We're not going to reuse that, but we will reuse the slide, so that needs to go back in the tray. We turn the light off. Uh, we turn the socket off. We unplug it. And it's really important that we store these microscopes properly. If they're not stored properly, then when you remove one from the trolley, another one will follow, and that's going to lead to breakages. I'm going to put a cover over the top of this because dust will damage the microscope, and other than that, you're done.